to you live. What could be more reprehensible than two old farts? Three old farts featuring Dave and Steven and Greg Shapiro with funny ha ha. I want to be like on a merry-go-round with that introduction. The music just makes me want to yeah. like get on a merry-go-round. Welcome, and... everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, welcome, it. welcome. Yeah, yeah I know, right? The only, it, it, <laughs> that's the only applause. The only applause I ever, I've ever had. I think that's. So, yeah. But uh, yeah. well, it wasn't really for me. It was for Greg. It's for Greg. Yeah, hi, Greg. Greg. Hi. How hi, you welcome. doing? How are you doing? Yeah. How are you doing? I, I appreciate the applause and the carnival uh, carousel music. It's great. There you go. Yeah, uh, sun is shining where I am. And uh, can't complain. Nice. Well, I'm in, I'm in Austin. Come. We don't have an ice storm today, so we're good. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that right? Okay. Well, and no, no. So, yeah. yeah, we the beginning of the end of April, January, beginning of February. So Texas has their temperatures different. Rest of the world freezes either at zero Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit. In yeah. Texas, when it goes below 40, apparently it stops. The, yeah. Everything freezes. Not that it really does. The world stops. Yeah. Nothing can happen. Yeah. And the minute it goes above 40 again, it's okay. Okay. So, yeah, we had an ice storm. We had this. There was no power. And I'm like, but there's no ice and there's no storm. And what's the problem? They're like, no, no. It's 39 degrees. It could happen. We have to shut yeah. down the whole Austin, Texas. And in Better two days. Down yeah. The capital of, yeah. Of Texas. Texas. Well, it's not only the capital of Texas. It's not like it's anything important. So, uh, you know. <laughs> I remember if it's. If it's interesting, I went to you know university in Chicago, Northwestern okay. University. Sure. Uh, back when it was back when it was the Northwest, founded in what eighteen thirty something. Yeah. But yeah, uh, so so yeah, uh, freshman year, uh, uh, first day of classes uh, when you know the snow hits, and uh, the uh, girl down the hall who was from Texas. Uh, <laughs> just like enters the hallway yawning in her pajamas around 11 or something and like what what why is everybody where's everybody going yeah <laughs> and we said yeah that's just going to classes but she's and like she yeah, was shocked no yeah oh no forget it if there's Everyone snow here down and they canceled everything yeah. <laughs> we're like no no honey sorry you really yeah this yeah, is tech. This is this is you. Chicago. Yeah, it's like yeah. New York, Chicago. Because we were supposed to move, and it was funny because the movers like there's, there could be ice on the road. I'm like, dude, I'm from New York City. There could be Godzilla eating the bridges, and there could be sleet and snow. There could be a nuclear holocaust in New Jersey, and the movers are still going to show up. Yeah. And he goes, not in, not in Texas. I'm like, you guys come across like we're big and we're tough. You guys pussies. The kids at PS one thirty seven that are like in the fourth grade get to kick your whole butt. So oh, it was right. kind of oh, you know. right. You really are from New York. <laughs> yeah. I lived in New York. I lived in Manhattan for a while. I, yeah. I definitely identify with that. It's like, wait, well, sorry, Godzilla's here, and he's yeah. eating. The, wait, where is he in the Hudson? Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm crossing the East River. I'll be fine. Yeah. We're good. Been, we can do dinner for a meeting. <laughs> yeah, we're still good. We can still have dinner. Don't worry, we'll make yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's a, it's a very different mentality. And I, and I always like when I go back because it's just, I always want to take somebody that's never left and bring them there, like from all, anywhere. And they're just like, wow. And I'm like, I know, like you see, like in the car, people and things that go like, I'm walking here. They go, people don't really do that. I'm like, really? Wait till some car almost hits them. I'm like, they, they, there's all a bunch of explanatives that go with, I'm walking here. Uh, and they just look at me like I'm on drugs. And I'm like, dude, it's just, uh, it's just awesome. It's just uh, boom, 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 boom. So I don't know. Enough. I digress. No, but every, 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 you know, culture and city has, has its own weird and wacky stuff. I mean, I remember, um, laughing hysterically to something that you posted craig about the dutch on bicycles with umbrellas i mean that is just you have to see that to believe it <laughs> <laughs> because i can't even walk with an umbrella and i'll get on a bike with one come on uh, and again, or, 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 or are you so dutch now that you actually can do it come on fess up i can definitely do it but i mean here's the smart move uh if you're in the netherlands uh and you're you're bicycling uh, it, you know, it, and it rains. I mean, that you still got a bike 
<laughs> to get to work or, you know, get the groceries, whatever you're doing. So, uh, yeah, you'll be tempted to bring a an umbrella. But now two problems with that uh, strategy. One is that if you put an umbrella up here to cover your head, the rain is going to come at you like from <laughs> horizontal. <laughs> OK, and so. Then as soon as you start like putting, uh, you know, by the way, yeah, as soon as you start putting the umbrella up here, then the wind is going to catch it and like turn it inside out, um, which is cool if you're a fan of like, you know, funny car. <laughs> <laughs> what are those funny cars with the like parachutes behind them? Anyway, um, the smart move, though, is um, if you are tempted to ever bike with a uh, uh, an umbrella, like one hand on the handlebar, one hand on your umbrella, don't cover your head this is a lost cause <laughs> either get a hat or just deal with it but what the part of your body you want to cover is this your thigh uh from like here to here to your knee um that is the you can like get to a, a meeting and you can like get a scarf or whatever and like brush off your hair but you cannot dry out that one section of your legs that will get completely wet. And uh, and the good news is if you put your umbrella over your handlebars, then the wind won't turn it inside out. And uh, yeah, you can navigate more easily. Yeah, but it's like it's like a uh, modern day form of jousting, isn't it? That's the trouble. Because you've got to be wacky dodge people on their bikes with yeah. with you know umbrellas stuck out the front uh, trying to you know push you out of the way and a little yeah i guess yeah and also if it's not expanded you can just keep your umbrella and, and use it for jousting yeah <laughs> is there a lot of jousting yeah, going on in the netherlands that i'm not aware of i haven't seen oh, that yeah. in the news, yeah, most, so. most, mostly to, mostly to get on and off trams but uh, there's okay. there is yes there's People definitely are... some of that queuing is okay. not something that they are fond of oh, in, in the netherlands no. uh queuing to a certain extent, if there is actual queuing going on, then the Dutch attitude is like, oh, maybe I know someone up at the front of the uh, <laughs> sort of, oh, I, here I am, uh, daring you to kick him out. But uh, there's no um, jousting, there's no technical jousting with uh, umbrellas, but there is, aha, uh, fuel yuppen. Have you heard of that? I know, what is that? I'll feel yeah, it's, it's from it's Friesland. Just... Okay. And it's the way the farmers will cross the uh, canals between their fields. Uh, they'll take a pole, and it's it's like pole vaulting. Well, okay. Pole vaulting, yeah. It's using the pole to uh, leap your way across the canal, and uh, it's it makes for great viewing, uh, just because inevitably someone ends up eating it. Uh, nice. Falling into the drink. <laughs> so I've done it. <laughs> I was gonna say I want to go and try that. I'll be the one you can video yeah. that. I'll be the one in the drink because I'll yeah. feel like I have no oh, clue yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah. That is they, very they, cool. They, they all these wonderful management courses and stuff. They take you up there and say, you know, like it's team building, guys. So um, he, one guy has a pole. The other guy stands on the other side and calls out at you, and you have to pole vault your way across it. Yeah, interesting. There's some great films mm -hmm. of some serious, some serious, um, you know, face smacking. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and regarding queuing, I remember when I first came to Holland, of course, you know, straight from from the God's own country. And um, yeah, in Amsterdam, uh, oh, uh, just missed a tram. So I thought, oh, I'll wait for the next one. So I'm standing there and, and there's some people sort of, you know, all sort of around me, sort of, sort of almost queuing up. So the tram came and, of course, um, the train came and went, and I'm still standing there because everybody else who was behind me had pushed me out of the way. And then the Dutch have an amazing skill to manage to get on the tram before anybody yeah. gets off it as well. Yeah. So you get this, like, this huge con congestion at the front. And I thought, okay, right, well, I'll just be polite. I'll wait for the second one. <laughs> Same thing yeah. happened again. This is uh, middle of Amsterdam, you know, in the middle of tourists. Uh, if they weren't yeah. stoned, they were eating. If they weren't stoned, they were eating ice cream. So uh -huh. you know, everybody just just kind of pushed me out of the way. I thought, wow, yeah. you know. Yeah. And now, and yeah. now I know it's a dreadful thing to say, but I can actually get on a train before people get off. <laughs> Congratulations! Uh, skill, thank you. A skill <laughs> that I problem. only learned here in Holland. Yeah. yeah. 
I, I indeed, I, I uh, what you describe as UK mentality, that, that's what I call Midwest nice. It's where I grew up. Right. I grew up in the Midwest, you know, Chicago and or, uh, you know, family in Wisconsin. Um, but I remember still when I uh, got to New York and. Uh, they don't um, queue in New York, do they, Stephen? I mean, I can't imagine people yeah. queue. Do, do we queue? Well, see, in New York, we hate everybody, but we're nice enough that when the train gets there, even yeah. though we're right at the door, we let yeah. you come out and then we just pound in. Yeah. Sometimes um, you'll hear a conductor's voice, you know, like, let yeah, him out yeah. first. <laughs> yeah. Let him out yeah. first, please. <laughs> well, now the train oh. system there has gotten much better. So when I was a kid, this is literally like what Greg just is true. You'd be like, oh, the old yeah. and be like, what the? And if you didn't know where you were going, it was the worst. Now that they've got a, a, a real PA system, you can actually hear things. The worst place for a queue, Russia. When we went to Russia for business, the first time we went, we were at Newark. And we knew we were going to have problems. We're in the front of the bus, and the laces were going to start boarding, and everybody just rushed the gate at Newark. And I was like, okay. And on the plane, the guy sitting next to me was just on 60 Minutes, and we're talking. And I was like, I saw you on 60 Minutes. And we we had to eat soup together, his wife had given, and everyone's like, do you know this guy? I'm like, hey, he's my new best friend. Um, but we get there, and he says to me, listen, he says, have you ever been here? Go first time. He says, here's what you do. When you get off the plane, there's two things. Either you run like a madman to customs, or he says, you just wait and you just get through customs in an hour. He says, because everybody's going to bolt. He says, we don't believe in a queue. And as we got off the plane, the six of us, everybody, like, I thought I was the Olympic sport of, we were in track and field. Uh -huh. There's room. Luckily, our client, let's just say, was an oligarch. And he saw us all the way in the back. And he sent some people to get us. And we went through another door and we were fine. Nice. But I was like, oh, my God seriously and he's like yeah he's like, that's just their mentality and i was like wow so there is no queue in russia at the yeah. um, at the airport or on the plane it was a, it was no, a different well, experience the, the, the dutch on the planes are also well you know on the holiday planes and stuff you know trying to get their grandmother and the kids into the top locker and you know <laughs> and, and just stand, and just standing there you know pushing them all in and um, people queuing up behind and trying to get past and uh, mayhem may absolutely mayhem uh, so there you I, go. I was. Sh should I try to make the joke? I just thought of like. Sure. Why not? Russian men mentality, and I mean, first of all, Russians being in a rush. There's a dad joke there somewhere. That's uh, true. <laughs> but I'm just thinking about you know Russia and Ukraine, and uh, it seems like the mentality of <laughs> tumble your way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. You. Maybe they didn't even know where they're going. It's just we have to get there quickly. We and, took a left. Uh, <laughs> All of us tumbled anyway, uh, but it's been one year, hasn't it? It's been one yeah, year. It's been, yeah, it's been. It's a yeah. It's the one year anniversary the other day. They were saying on the news. It's a weird yeah. word as well. Have we yeah. agreed as the media that that's the word we're using? What are yeah, you wearing for the anniversary? Right, right. Yeah. I'm gonna get a card for them. I mean, no, it was yesterday and it was like it's the one year anniversary of the invasion of the Ukraine. I'm thinking, yeah. if I live in the Ukraine, I'm not looking at this as an anniversary. Can we just say it's one year that the, the I the I guess the the, the land acquisition game started or something let's yeah. like i don't think yeah. i would be calling it an anniversary but uh, yeah you know. it's not a memorial it's not a right memorial. well maybe i mean have you checked with hallmark i mean i may, maybe the cards <laughs> were, maybe the cards are already out you know yeah yeah oh yeah God. that's true yeah, yeah. there's a oh, we've got like a, a singing anniversaries we just go happy war anniversary it's only a year you know? yeah of course yeah yeah, yeah. No, too I early, don't think so. Too early. Oh, too, early. Too, early. too early. Yeah. yeah. So, My stepfather was named Warren because he was born in November. He was born in Armistice Day, 1944. Wow. So that was War End. War End. War End. Oh. <laughs> War End. Very <laughs> nice. He gave his parents for that. but uh... <laughs> I love it. What did you think of Grandma and Grandpa? We don't discuss it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, um, yeah. yeah, it's, um, uh, um, it, well, in the Netherlands, I know the, uh, uh, they, they uh, said, you know, th there was, uh, there was choir uh, singing, there was uh, the Dutch prime minister who did, you know, snuck in a visit before Biden snuck in his uh, visit yeah. to, to Zelensky, uh, and the UK announced their presenters for Eurovision. So nice. You know. Hey, yeah. priorities, priorities. Yeah. yeah. But the other thing yeah. that everybody missed that I caught, maybe you guys didn't miss it, is that 
the archaeologists down in South America said that the Mayans and the Aztecs had a superhighway. What? That, yeah. yeah, yeah. They said they had a superhighway. So they, one of the archaeologists, I'm saying, like it's in Smithsonian Review or whatever, was saying we have to rethink how we look at history now because what, what? we think is wrong. I thought that was fascinating. Does that superhighway go to Russia then, and to the Ukraine? Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, yeah. no, apparently, I think it goes all over South America. They found roads. and what, If you believe what oh, Graham right. Hancock writes, he will talk up. And there's all these hidden pyramids, which they have pictures of all over South America. Yeah. It's just fascinating because they say South America was like a big atrium. Like the, the jungle in Brazil is an atrium. If you actually take a look at it, how it's laid out and what they huh. did and whatnot. So the superhighways from like fuel Mexico apparently connected everything down in Brazil and whatnot. So they're like, yeah. what would they need a superhighway for, right? Because apparently they didn't have transportation. So everyone's saying we have to rethink history now. Well, yeah, and with a lot of cocaine, okay. you can just get a lot done. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, you know. a lot of what, did, what did Robin Williams call it? Per Peruvian marching powder, he called it. Peruvian, <laughs> Bolivian. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He unfortunately uh, called it a close friend for. A Way for, too long for a while, yeah. So yeah. we miss you, Robin. But anyway, yeah, so. twenty fifteen. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah. mean, 14, super highways and stuff. I, 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 I could feel the lizard moment coming on, but I, I, no, no, no so. lizard people talk today because no. Greg is going to tell us all that. We're going to talk about climate change because that's I, I know he likes that. And we have video on climate change, and yeah, we got some, we have video, a we got some bits and pieces. Yeah. We also have a video, which I think is very funny. It's the Dutch names. And I saw this like a couple of weeks ago and I knew we were putting it on the show. I was on the floor. Yay. That was the funniest thing when I just saw that Dutch names that could be offensive. There was the one with the KKK, you'll see with the kids. <laughs> and there was another, I was like, oh my God, this yeah. is good. I love it. This is yeah, the funniest yeah. thing. That's my everyday. Well, we'll, so, we'll yep. save that one. Till, we'll save that one for last. But uh, uh, Greg, just, uh, just before we uh, put on one of your very funny uh, videos, which oh. you regularly uh, regularly uh, put on YouTube, you have your yeah. YouTube channel. Of course, that's in the description underneath, as we all know. Yes. Um, and you, it's great that you share the stuff with the two old farts as well. But I, I'd also seen stuff uh, last week or so about you being in Paris. How, how that? How did that go down? Because the French don't really have a sense of humor, do they? They have been taken <laughs> away at birth, I think. <laughs> um, let's see. Not very controversial. Right, on, on that question, I think I'll answer that question in a couple different ways. <laughs> oh, you, 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 have you been rebooked then? That's what you're trying to tell me. <laughs> um, honestly, I um, I was in Paris uh, because my, my daughter's uh, living in Paris now. And oh, wow. Yeah, I'm getting to that age where um, I'm like the empty nester, and uh, uh, so yeah, I I, uh, I happened to find a site just called a website called English Comedy in Paris, and uh, there's a lot of English language comedy in Paris, uh, obviously French uh, comedy as well, um, mm -hmm. and yeah, there's uh, a, there's actually a, a TV series I can recommend uh, that's called Droll. D R O L E, and the O has a hat on it because it's French. But anyway, um, it's uh, it's about the current stand-up comedy scene in Paris. It's all in French, but still, the French version, the French comedy scene, is very influenced by uh, the, the 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 latest version. I think is very influenced by the American and British uh, sense of uh, stand-up comedy. Uh, again, in France, it's confusing because if you call yourself a comedian, comedian means actor. <laughs> if you're, if you want to say stand-up comedian, you have to say humoriste, <laughs> which uh, doesn't matter if you're performing in English because, uh, yeah, English is uh, there's just so many people trying to be Emily in Paris right now. Uh, the English comedy in Paris is uh, it's it, 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 there's like a show, at least one show every week uh, or every night of the week. Uh, right. So so I was in um, Paris last Wednesday and uh, there was a show going on called Improvised PowerPoint Comedy Show. Now I've done improv. I've done PowerPoints. Uh, I've done stand up. And um, so, yeah, I uh, 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 got a, a spot on the lineup, uh, the closer, actually. And uh, I had so much fun <laughs> that I spoke for way too long. <laughs> I had big trouble afterward, but um, yeah, they wanted me to talk about uh, 
the, the what they assign you a, a topic and the topic uh, was like a, a guide to the most depressing uh, spots to visit uh, on on the planet uh so yeah uh based on improv and a slide of like a, a, a video shoot 'em up game of uh a, a plumber of a cat laying a turd in a rice maker <laughs> oh nice i had to make up a whole story uh concluding with the help of audience uh, participation concluding that um uh, uh, ukraine uh is actually less depressing than the uk <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but anyway so yeah it's it's um it's it's super fun uh, to do and i think the next time i do it if i have it have to do that format again i'll just improvise as trump and that'd be uh, awesome yeah so wait so do you have a i was going to ask you do you have any upcoming shows you want to tell your fans about uh yeah i do honestly the the next uh, show the the big um the project I'm working on right now is in Amsterdam, uh, okay. and it is a Boom Chicago theater. It's called Pep and Greg Save America. So Pep mm -hmm. Rosenfeld, uh, my writing partner since we've been like 17 years old, uh, he used to write for Weekend Update on Saturday Night Live. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll do sort of uh, stand-up shows together from time to time. And this time uh, we are uh, sharing just a, some basic... I don't know, insights on w w simple reforms, you know, that we could okay. fix uh, the system in America that wouldn't take a constitutional amendment or anything. And uh, and we, we try to make it funny. <laughs> so right. that's our challenge. Very that's nice. and on the 10th, 11th, and 12th of uh, March. Oh, so it's coming up. Perfect. So yes. anybody watching this, can, if they're in Amsterdam, you can go see you. Yeah. And they can say they saw you here on Two Old Farts, which will be interesting if somebody actually says that to you. Because you can be like, really? I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'll be like, no kidding. Someone watches this other than that us? That is great. So, that's great. Yeah. And then, and you have, yeah. No, no, yeah. And then you have the movie coming out. Uh, yes. Wait, which one? I don't know. Well, the, one you know you, the one you the told one us about last time. The one he told us about that he couldn't tell us about. That oh, one. yes, of course. Yeah, sorry. That's far enough away now. I'll, okay. I'll let you know. When it gets okay. closer, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 good. It's uh, yeah. uh, the other I had thing. A girlfriend I mean, like that. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, so wait, behind me is is fun. Yes. Um, I've got uh, a bookshelf now with. Uh, so here's my book, uh, and then also my wife now has her own. Oh, that's oh right. yeah! Congratulations. congratulations! Congratulations on that. Yeah, she's been published. It's only in Dutch, but um, it's called. Uh, well, it means dream house. Uh, in, Very nice. in English and it's what's so in, in Dutch it's called Ik Vertrek there's this reality show where yeah. there's always a couple we're done with the rat race and we want to go buy a farm in Spain or France and convert right. it into a B&B &B or something yeah. uh, what is that called in the UK it's like escape to the country or something escape to the country yeah no that's more of a property uh, uh, ah. buying a house but uh, yeah, yeah it's the same sort of same sort of premise pissed off of where you are I want to go somewhere else this this uh yeah this this story is like um, a dutch couple that start in the 70s like we're gonna buy a house in france in the middle of nowhere and then the little girl that gets dragged along and then the adult uh version of the little girl who has to go back to the house and um then you realize like oh something must have happened there but then it's you know told in the present day and in the past and right. it all you know weaves yeah. together at the end uh and yeah, the reviews have been really good in Dutch. Nice. Anyway, the English version should be coming out soon. But most people have said like, "Oh, it's like I don't." I just started reading it and I couldn't put it down. <laughs> so, you know, well, thank you, well, author. Now I, none of my chores are done, and my kids are going hungry because I couldn't go to the store. But the book was good. So there you go. But the good thing is, when it comes into English, I will get a copy and read it because I love to read, as David knows. So I will enjoy yeah, that tremendously. Yeah. And, well, the, the uh, thing about it being in Dutch, Stephen, is it's probably written very slowly, so you can read it. Very that's, <laughs> that's um, yeah, that's that's, yeah, that's, that's a nice point. Yeah, because it's the right language it's written in is how you read it. Yeah. Um, the fact yeah, that I yeah. don't know any Dutch, it would just be like the Swedish chef, if you will, from the Muppets. I'd be like, boom, 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 and I wouldn't know what I'm reading. I'll just wait for the English version to come out and buy it. So we're yeah. good. Okay. But I'll have to send it to Greg because I'm going to need an autographed copy in English, you know, from oh, his yeah. wife. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. So well, we'll go back and forth. To, yeah. I'll make a nice uh, holiday present. Uh, um, <laughs> 
I've, we've got something uh, which you very kindly sent me this morning, which we'd like to share with everybody. This is called why was it called why the Dutch dig holes or something? Is that what it was called? Why the Dutch dig remember. digging? Oh, why the Dutch dig digging? So digging. Well, right. let's have, let's have a let's have a look at that, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Hold your hats because it's this is very funny. Well, this is hysterical. Twenty six percent of the country is yeah. under sea level. That's the reason why Dutch people are some of the tallest in the world. The short ones didn't survive. <laughs> Hi, it's me, Greg Shapiro, the American Netherlander. And if you want to know the difference between America and the Netherlands, it's kind of like the difference between old money and new money. America, very much new money. Wow, look how much money I have. And it's gone. Whereas Dutch people are old money. We have so much money, we don't like to talk about it. Being loud and proud is just not in the Dutch DNA. Maybe after so many years of offering credit, they've become allergic to taking credit. But there's so much that Dutch people should take credit for. The container ship in the Suez Canal. Who finally set it free? <laughs> it was the Dutch. Who kept that latest hurricane from flooding New Orleans? It was the Dutch. Who's cleaning up the plastic soup in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch? It's a part Croatian guy, but he's also part Dutch. Now wait, some of you might be thinking about that New Orleans point just now. During Hurricane Ida, didn't I still see pictures of New Orleans being flooded? Yes, but, according to the Washington Post, images of whole neighborhoods submerged in murky water come this time from New Orleans suburbs located outside the city's defenses. City defenses built by the Dutch. In fact, it was a bunch of Dutch people who advised the Americans that you might want to extend the city's defenses outside of New Orleans proper, but turns out this time it was the Americans who were too cheap. The city's water defenses came specifically from Dutch engineering firm Royal Haas Koning, Koning meaning king, and Haas being like hash, really reinforcing the wrong Dutch stereotype. <laughs> the Dutch are the ones who created the Delta Works, protecting the Netherlands coast, and the Maaslandkering, protecting the port of Rotterdam. Each one of these gates is larger than the Eiffel Tower. But do you see the Maasland carrying on tourist postcards, t-shirts, refrigerator magnets? No. What do you see? Hash. Meaning by <laughs> default, the most famous form of Dutch water engineering is the bong. But Dutch people have been doing water engineering for centuries. It is a quote attributed to René Descartes. God made the world, but the Dutch made the Netherlands. If in the Bible you had most Moses parting the sea and leading his people across the seabed to safety on the other side. Dutch people would have been the ones saying, nah, here looks good. Moses yelling at them, keep moving, this is all going to be underwater any minute. But Dutch people like, that's okay, we'll put up some dikes, we'll dig some canals. Gezellig. Dutch people don't like taking credit, even when they build their own land. Look at this island that was just put up in the water outside of Amsterdam. They dug it out, they built it up, and then what did they do? They put water back in. Happy little canals, gonna put those right in there. Dutch mentality is like, after stealing so much land from the water, we should probably give some water back. That's Dutch modesty. Digging land out of the water is what Dutch people do by nature, but they don't like to be caught bragging about it. Scheppen, goed. Opscheppen, niet goed. Awesome. That's funny stuff. Um, uh, did that play okay? It, yeah. Yeah. Okay, it played good. 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 It played. Good, good. Well, it's it, because the nice thing about it is the, on the podcast, it's all audio, right? So they just get to hear it. The other there people that are on YouTube actually have to watch the three of us plus yeah. that. that. So works. they're like, oh, God. So, yeah. But wait, guys, wait till we get to the, the names that are offensive. Those are, that's going to just, nah, that just blows me away. That's yeah, just yeah. the funniest video. <laughs> so I like that. So how's, and, and I know you're big on the climate. So what's yeah. going on? What's going on with the climate uh, this last, we haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. So what's going on new in the climate world? I was watching the Dutch uh, news last night. Uh, David, did you happen to watch the Dutch NOS news? Eight o'clock news? Yeah, um, yeah. I think uh, not sure because uh, we watch it on replay. So because it's just well, as well, equal. We'll, we'll 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 generally be eating dinner around that time. So that's just kind of our ritual. Um, and we'll watch, watch, watch. And the rule is, oh, you shut up until you have to you have to eat on a ritual time in Holland, of course. You know yes. That. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for being um, sure. people. But um, yeah, we um, 
Well, I was watching the news, and the part where I would normally tune out uh, was when the meteorologist uh, 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 popped in this little detail, uh, and I think I heard it correctly, that uh, Sunday or maybe Saturday, uh, this this weekend was like the first day in Dutch history that 100% of the electricity uh, used or consumed, you know, uh, by the, uh, yeah, by the country, uh, business and individuals, uh, I, it was um, renewable. Uh, hmm. So I think, yeah, between wind energy and solar energy and like other, they might con consider biomass uh, as well. But actually, yeah, we, we just got a, um, a report from the Dutch, uh, well, from our, our energy provider here, which is Vattenfall Energy. That's technically from Sweden. Um, but uh, yeah, they've been busy in the Dutch market. And uh, so we got a printout uh, of our uh, energy use. And uh, so it's like, we're, they've been encouraging people to conserve, we have, uh, but also like, where does your energy come from? So it's like 66% wind energy. So because we signed up for like the eco, please. 66% wind energy, uh, like 22% uh, uh, solar. And I think biomass is in there, which is basically like burning garbage as far as yeah. I know. But that's um, only, it's under 5%, I think. Uh, so anyway, yeah, it's, um, uh, the Netherlands is not the first country that has had 100% of their energy provided by from renewables. I think the UK already hit that target uh, like last year at some point, but yeah. Um, so that's, that's uh, some climate good news and that's the uh, latest sort of long-term project that I'm working on. That's very cool. Well, I was, yeah, I saw, I read an article the other day, a guy was talking about electric vehicles and the, and how they want to make everybody drive an electric vehicle. And then he yeah. said, and that was, he said, that's the good stuff. Now I said, let me give you the bad stuff. And then he started yeah. to talk about strip mining and yeah. how you do this and how he kept going through everything yeah. and by the time by the time he was done i'm like you know i think the cars by petro are just as good right now so uh, it's yeah. sort of by the time you get done doing like the recycling and it's, it's like it's it doesn't make it better so uh, is that what but you you know better than that right i mean i i, I mean i do i'm being somewhat tongue-in-cheek i yeah i go i go back to nicholas tesla when yeah. he could provide free energy and yeah. literally yeah. You could just have cars that are running off of this dark energy and dark right. matter. Yeah, that would be the perfect world. But you know, J.P. Morgan went greedy with one with everybody yeah. else, and like we'll yeah. never be billionaires. And well, there I mean, you it's go. interesting how Shell, which is also Dutch, you know, right. like well, not anymore because they moved because of tax purposes. But right. uh, <laughs> ah, but uh, Shell, uh, Royal Dutch Shell, you know, mm -hmm. they they have made a big move into like, well, you know, we know that fossil fuels are not the future. So look how responsible and green we're being. We're going to transition to the new. What are they calling the energy transition? Um, and so they're <laughs> they're now transitioning to hydrogen. Yeah, that's good. That's <laughs> also a commodity that they can right. control and trade. And, right. uh, but yeah, but it's uh, because everybody wants to be driving a Hindenburg. And yeah, I think that's the important thing. Like, I, there was a, I saw the other day in the news, maybe a couple of weeks ago, after we had spoken the last time, oh, yeah. that yeah. they Boeing tested a hydrogen plane. And all I kept thinking to myself is, don't fly to New Jersey. And <laughs> two, if you told me my plane is full of hydrogen, I'm not getting on it. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'll, I'll go with the Petro. It's I'm yeah. good with jet fuel. I yeah. it, and the hydrogen is still unstable. And then there was um, yeah. Saudi Aramco, which is uh -huh. technically the largest company on the planet i think dollar wise yeah. um they are building the world's largest if you will hydrogen and lng and whatever ports right. um, there because they've got tons of it um it, it, so what? they're they're building hydrogen and whatever and whatever they're building like the largest ports and containers I mean, anyone who has water thing. has plenty of hydrogen, hydrogen you right. just have to separate the oxygen out <laughs> But apparently but, they have they're doing it better than everybody right now for okay. whatever the reason is, and they're building the world's largest port for it. Right. And I thought that was interesting. Well, honestly, yeah. I mean they're yeah. talking about green versus blue hydrogen, right? Yeah. Uh, and yep. so yeah. uh, green is when it's uh, you know, renewable power. But I mean solar right. power in Saudi, I can't imagine that's uh, a problem. <laughs> that's yeah. so well, and they're and they're trying to do this neo city in the middle of nowhere. Oh my god, yeah. So yeah. and that's and and we've met a few consultants over the years that have been working on that. I'm like, how's it going? They're like, yeah, it's going. I'm like, okay. Uh -huh. So it's like I think it's it's one of those things that's going to take a while. Get some yeah. promo, some voiceover promo for them. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. So, 
uh, but anyway. I just um, wondered actually, guys, because whether or not yeah. the uh, electric car vehicle whole thing about why yeah. we should all drive electric is that not sponsored by McDonald's? Ah. Because everybody, everybody that I see has their car parked outside of McDonald's uh, because, <laughs> they wait, exactly. because because they have to wait to get it charged up to go. So, you know, I don't know. I just conspiracy theory. You know. Ah uh, yes, that that could I, be I, indeed. I've well, made it, I've made a mission of mine to start my own conspiracy theory this year. I, I oh, that see is that. Good. Oh yeah, start. Yeah, we need more conspiracy. We need more good ones. Yeah. But, yeah. But in yeah. the states here, you'll see the charging stations. They'll be at Target. Uh -huh. They'll be at like a Wanna Burger. Uh -huh. They'll be at like a certain gas Wanna stations. Wanna Burger is that actually Wanna a name for something? That's that is really a name for something. Really? But which, you say, but, oh, yeah, oh, really oh, is. Wanna, I want sounds a burger. Like, sounds like something I have to go to the doctors for. You know, I've got a touch of I've got a touch of the Warner Burgers. Uh, there you go. Sorry, Brits well, cannot make fun of hamburger joint names after what Wimpy's and uh, oh, Wimpy's. Hey. That's good. Yeah, but Wimpy's yeah, so got eaten. By, ball, Wimpy's, got, they, Wimpy's got eaten by uh, by McDonald's. Then. Oh, is that right? I mean, they lost the burger war. Yeah. Eaten. I yeah. see what you did there. Yeah, uh, there's another cute. terrible name in the UK. What, what? Not quick. Quick is French. What? Anyway, um, sorry. You were talking about. Well, what about no, sorry, no, no. the station okay. for recharging? It's only test. It was outside like a Starbucks uh, in the Netherlands. And my wife said like, oh, can anyone charge there or only Teslas? And right. I think it's only Teslas, but I don't know. Yeah, see, that's the other thing with the electric vehicles. I'm like, at some point, don't you have to have a universal plug? I know it's in the UK, they're, 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 un they're universal because there's different ones, right? But then yeah. when you go to Target, you'll see 42 Tesla ones. Yeah. And I'm thinking, okay. But if I have the Porsche one, or if I have this one, yeah. or if I have the Hummer from GM, right. yeah, where am, am, does it? Is it? Are we plugging it all in, or what are we doing? And the other thing is, is I, yeah. I was, I chuckled because this one guy plugged in his Tesla. We walked in together. Yeah, you know, we, I'm got my Walk stuff. Where? I'm, I'm the, to Target because I Target. need to get because that's where Pellegrino is cheaper, and I'm a Jew, and everything cheap is what I like. Um, so. And he's like taking his time, and, he's, and I looked at him. Yeah. And he goes, "You know, it's gonna take forty-five minutes." He goes, "I'm never in a rush." <laughs> I go to you the know. longest line to check out. I go, oh my, <laughs> God. I'm like, "Oh my god, too much work." Yeah. So, I think no, they have is, to get uh, that going. It's range anxiety, and it's also the time uh, to to charge up. That is true. Although, more good news. Um, I just read uh, about MIT, uh, yep. or was it Tau? No, sorry, Tau Delft. I think it's a Dutch. Uh, Chemistry, yeah. well, I'll look it up, but um, yeah. it was um, some chemical scientists who figured out that the way the lithium ion battery works, there's like a membrane uh, in between the, so the electrons have to move across a membrane. That's like how you get the energy. But um, apparently there's a new chemical bath that they can use and it adds to the membrane so that the upshot is... Uh, the lithium batteries might uh, uh, um, last like up to twice as long. Nice. Um, yes, and and I think then the again total academia kicks in, and the professor was like, "I'd never set up to twice. Like we've proven that it's conceivable that it could be like eighty to ninety percent. Sounds like up to twice as much. Twice, right. like, again, even twenty percent would be a massive game change." Yep. Uh, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'll look that up. Um, I just but uh, Lucid, if I'm not mistaken, the Chinese car company. Is, yeah. I think it's Chinese. But Lucid, I look, first of all, I love their vehicles. Second of all, they have the largest um, range. I think it's 500 miles on their battery. Yeah, we so, said that last time. Yeah, and so I, I was yeah. I was like, that's impressive because I know Porsche is yeah. like 380. I know yeah. Teslas are in the threes, but I'm like, oh, yeah. if you can go 500 miles. Yeah right. I don't yeah. Have, now I'm not worried about driving the car to you somewhere. <laughs> yeah <laughs> right. But my my concern is at 300 miles. Like if I go to my wife, let's go to Texas. Let's go to Dallas just for fun for the day. Yeah. yeah. So when I get to Dallas, now I have to charge it just to make sure I can get home. But yeah. if I have 500 miles, I can go to Dallas and back. Or if I really want to take a trip, most people yeah. aren't going to drive more than 500 miles in a day. Driving yeah. 300 is no big deal, right? Yeah. But 500 yeah. is like yeah. But yeah. at least I can stop and charge, go to bed. So if that's yeah. the other thing. It's kind of either have to you're putting solar panels on my car, or you're going to put charging stations that make it like I want to use it. Because right now, for me, yeah. they're just they're around town cars. Oh uh, yeah. You yeah. know, even the supercars have yeah. the EV part where you can flip the EV yeah. 
yeah. and you'll get 30 to 50 miles around town as yeah. an EV and you don't have yeah. to run your, you know, 12 cylinder naturally aspirated, whatever. But you, and I'm like, if I really want to be a, a, a douchebag, I can buy a supercar yeah, yeah. and I can drive around town with my 40 miles of EV. And if we go yeah. on a trip, I can put gas. In. And so we I, honestly I think we have a there. house in the country. We're very lucky. Yeah. But I mean, if you have a house in the country, you got to have a plan <laughs> about to charge yeah. that. Thing. Uh, and we don't. So right. right now we are still driving uh, the share car, which is father-in-law's old diesel. <laughs> nice. <laughs> So oh, weird. so you're 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 a social pariah now. Then no want problem. To, uh, oh, we're we're the worst. Terrible. Yeah. Um, I love it. No, we're uh, working up to the point where we could afford uh, an e an EV. Um, but um, look at me switching topics again. I was looking for the article about the electric batteries, but instead, I found the MIT team uh, makes a case for direct carbon capture from okay. seawater. Oh, nice. Because there's been talk of like a Dutch startup called Carbion, and they're like, yeah, I mean, we just like get a big Dyson basically and like right. hoover up all of this, hoover up Dyson up all of this air and and filter out the carbon. But apparently, um, it's more efficient if you try to do that with with the seawater. So that would, I mean, because yeah, the oceans are a big carbon yeah. sink basically, or you know, carbon sponge, if you will. So yeah, if, if you could take the uh, decarbonize the seawater. And maybe I don't know if it's local. You could like protect coral reef, um, uh, uh, but apparently it's just more efficient uh, way of capturing uh, seawater. And then you reverse the acidity. Uh, you maybe reverse the, the temperature. I don't know. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, I can share that link as well. Very cool. And then okay. all the people can now read about something else that's new. Again, it's just the whole thing is to share climate yeah. news because, uh, yeah. you know, it might be 90% bad news, but there's still 10% of it that's good. And that if you spend true. 100% of your time in the 90% that's bad, then um, it's just not good for your, your brain. Or, or your psyche or anything. Yeah. No. <laughs> we're, get, we're, get, we're getting there. I mean, at, at some point, it'll, it'll turn the corner. And if it doesn't, in a million years, the sun's going to slam into our planet anyway. Who cares? I, exactly. Until, until then, yeah. look, you know, we can, we can try to, to do things. But no, I, I, I do like the, um, the EV stuff. I just want it to be a little yeah. further along. Yeah. And I also want them to tell me how they're going to dispose of the battery. And yeah. I read an article in The Economist last week that said, you know, um, coal boat they couldn't find. And all of a sudden now there's an abundant supply of this. And now there's an abundant supply of that. And I'm like, interesting. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh, so all of a sudden now because we need it, there's an abundant supply. It so I'm weird. like, okay. Yeah. yeah. So like, Rain it's like we can't find part. anything. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. But yeah. It's, it's so interesting. Of, uh, I did a show recently for, for Teu Delft, a technical university in Delft. And uh, they were like, uh, uh, we're the green leader you know of the energy transition and uh and they said you know take it with a grain of salt because technical technical university delft like right down the road from shell basically right. <laughs> for decades uh, the the technical part of our title meant helping shell find you know more fossil fuel that we could burn um, nice but yeah now they are using some of that same technology i guess you know just basically geological survey you know to yeah. not search for uh, uh, fossil fuels but to search for other minerals or whatever but yeah apparently it's if you know what to look for then all of a sudden you start finding uh, tons of stuff lithium cobalt yeah. I, I don't know uh, yeah that's the, well, the, the, new, the next show we do i'm just going to make a list of all the carb all the uh, climate good news and that's all next show we do with you we'll discuss all just climate good news and who's the like the best company that week uh, giving us the best climate good news. <laughs> yeah, That'll and be interesting. Well, Research. I've got yeah. some. I've got some good news and some bad news for the end because we're coming up to the end of the show. Yeah. But the bad news is, for some reason or another, um, I did something wrong this morning again uh, with, with, with with the graphics. So there's no ending graphics to the show. But we so thought we're going to end. <laughs> we're going to end the. We're going to end the show with um, the twenty five. Most offend or more of oh, more offensive love Dutch these. names. So, um, Great. thanks, Greg, for being with us. Thank you, um, thank you, Stephen, for joining us. Oh, and I say Greg, for stay after so we can this. make plans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's we'll all, uh, stay with us till the end of the show. So, um, enjoy Dutch streets. Go. They're quaint, charming, pedestrian friendly. 
And the vehicles on them can be downright offensive. Greg Shapiro here, the American Netherlander. I grew up in America first, and I moved to the Netherlands second. And when I first arrived in the Netherlands, I was shocked to see some of these vehicles parading around the Dutch streets with names that don't always translate very well into English. And some of them don't even make sense in Dutch, such as... This driver, who has caused so many accidents, his van is labeled All Dent. These contractors who are guaranteed to show you their man crack. And these ones who specialize in all interior. This van is being driven by a sick man. This is a cleaning company specializing in ball hair. And this one, old ball hair. Ewy. Black man. These couriers are like, I so fast. And these are fast as fuck. These Dutch guys will tow your car so quickly, you'll say, ya hollow. If your dying wish is to go bicycling, there's something called a last moment bike. Archie Bunker Movers, guaranteed to be racist. Like the driving school teaching driving the white way. And only in the Netherlands can you get topless driving lessons. This truck is like, hey cop, are you looking for a heist van? Because it's there in the handicapped spot, right next to the dick cock wagon. Ever wonder why sometimes you have no Wi-Fi or internet? Could be the multi-service blocker, or it could just be hackers. Some trucks are dangerous when they make you feel sleepy. Or sometimes they're just like, sleep. Why is this truck driving backwards? Ah, it's bizarro transport. Well, it's better than shit trans. And finally, wanna pop a cap in someone's ass? Try shot anus.